Hi everyone, my name is Seth. I write fantasy and science fiction as S.B. Sebrick. Um, welcome to my channel today. I wanted to talk a little bit about the seven point plot structure. Uh, one thing that I've noticed, particularly when I was getting into writing and along with a lot of other friends of mine that are getting into writing, is we know the story we want to share, but we don't just take the time to look at how stories have been told in the past and how they're being told now to make sure that we're creating those stories in a way that um, the public can really connect to. So as I've been pushing myself to be a better writer, one of these main things I've come across is called the seven point uh, story structure, which has been a really great way to just concisely explain and put together pretty much every book I've ever written and every short story I've ever created. So today I want to do a, a brief overview of how the seven point plot structure works and what it entails. And then maybe later on in the week, I might go into each one in detail, uh, depending on what kind of comments and questions are left. So the seven point plot structure is kind of a chronological overview of how a story will work. Um, your first point is character, and then you have setting, and you have a problem, which is basically your opening scene in any story of any length. You have a, an individual with a problem in a setting. Ideally, the character that's in your first scene is the one that's going to have the strongest appeal to the readers that you're targeting. Keep in mind, when, some, when one character appeals to a reader, you can do that on multiple levels, um, depending on their life circumstance, their level of education, the kind of problem they're trying to face. Um, there are a lot of different ways you can relate to a character. Uh, for example, Frodo in Lord of the Rings. Uh, not all of us have been little midget hobbits that were drafted into the military to fight a dark evil overlord, but all of us have at one point in our lives felt small. All of us have felt like we don't matter or we can't contribute, and the whole story of the Lord of the Rings is that no matter how small you are, you can make a difference and can contribute. Learning how to take the flaws and the weaknesses and the situations of your characters and aim them towards appealing to your readers is a very important skill to bring people into your stories and to keep them there. Now, setting. Your character has to be somewhere. Um, you want to make sure you're using concrete examples that clearly de define the scenario around you. Uh, one of the great examples that I picked up on Bla in Blaze Ward's book uh, on the seven point plot structure um, was that you don't want to use what are called fake details. Um, for example, if I say the character walked into the barn Barn is a fake detail because when I think of barn, I was raised next to my grandpa's dairy farm. We had this big brown dilapidated barn with these big tall roofs that were uh, breaking in down at the middle because it was 50 years old. Um, but for people that were born in the city maybe, when they think of barn, they think of the what the barn looks like in the picture books for kids, which is you know the big red barn with the narrow sloped roofs from the Midwest because there was so much snow. And someone else that was raised on a different kind of farm uh, might think of a different barn It's more of a silo. So you want to make sure when you're describing the setting you don't use those fake details. In my case for example I would say a uh, wide low bearing brown dilapidated building with um, warped roof where the snow had piled up over the years. Another important piece for carrying over the story is your characters need to have a problem. In each of the each of the chapters, your characters need to have a problem they're trying to solve. Ideally, one that aims towards the main climax of the story. Uh, me, I like to read epic fantasy, but whenever I get into more than two paragraphs of description, like if we come to a new town and I realize that the next two pages is describing the tapestries and the battlements and what the people are like in the streets, I get very bored of that. Within about two paragraphs, I start skipping ahead to where I find dialogue because we're not focusing on the character growth or the problem or the situation. We're just kind of sightseeing, and I read for more than that. Um, that's me as a reader. Other readers are different. Some readers really love to dive into the setting and go through every single word. I'm not one of them. Um, but one way to appeal to readers like me is to make sure that each chapter is starting off with a character in a setting with a problem. Not a character that's sightseeing, not a character that's sitting in a sauna and everything's fine but that problem needs to be present because that gives us a sense of urgency and pulls us on along in the rest of the story. Once you've established your character, your setting, and your problem, the character is going to try to fix the problem, whatever problem that might be. It could be the breakfast wasn't made right, so he tries to do it himself. It could be 
He figures his fighting instructor didn't know what he was talking about, so he went out in the street to prove that he already knows how to fight, whatever you wanted to do. He's always going to try to solve the problem, and he's going to fail. This is the, the fourth and fifth points of the seven-point plot structure, is the try and the fail. Now, you have to make sure that these things continue. You can succeed in the first try, or the second try, or the third try, but that success needs to create more problems. Like, we caught the, the agent that was tracking the bad guy, but when we read the letter that he was carrying, it showed that a bomb was set to go off over here. So rather than that try-fail cycle instantly solving all the problems, it opens up the doorway to new problems. The try-fail cycle, where the character tries to solve the problem and fails, uh, the number of those is determined by the length of the story you want. So if you're doing a, a really short story, like flash fiction, that's like you're starting the story on a failed try, and then you try and succeed. Or if you're doing a longer short story, you might have two or three try-fail cycles where the character is trying to solve a problem, trying to solve a problem, and then finally wins. In a novel, you can go a lot longer than that. You could have 10 try-fail cycles. And keep in mind, they don't all have to be aimed at the same problem, because all of us have different problems at different points in our lives, particularly if your story has multiple characters. Um, but those problems need to be escalating because the sixth point of the seven point plot structure is climax. Ideally, what's causing your reader, your, your character to fail throughout the story in all of those tri-fail cycles needs to be the weakness that he needs to overcome in order to win the climax. So if you're, if you're doing something for middle grade readers, it could be a student who's bad at math and hasn't figured out addition, multiplication, subtraction, whatever you want to play with. And all of these problems that he's having in his life is because he can't multiply 5 times 5. And then the climax needs to be, now he needs to multiply, but more is at stake. It's not just a test, it's the final exam. You, make, you want to make sure that the stress level of the book is gradually increasing up to the climax where it peaks out. The seventh point of the plot structure is the resolution. This is where you tie everything together. Uh, everything's great now, the climax has been dealt with. And you just, you know, you say, what was accomplished and what did it mean? And that is the end of your novel. You can lead, leave a couple loose ends to bring a reader over to the next book in a series. I'm a series writer, so that's kind of natural for me. But you want to make sure that in that book, in that series of tri-fail cycles, there's an overriding problem that is solved. Because you want that each book to have a sense of fulfillment, a sense that the character grew and overcame something. And that will help bring the readers through to your next novel and your next story. So I hope this kind of helped you guys open your eyes to a different way to look at your stories. Um, the seven point plot structure has really helped me in my quest to become a better writer um, because it's given me some very simple tools so I don't get overwhelmed when I decide to try new stories, new novels, new formats. Uh, it just gives me a, an interesting lens to look at storycraft through. Um, I will leave a link below to Blaze's book. It's fantastic. I highly recommend it. I uh, hope you're all having a wonderful holiday season, and I will talk to you later. Take care.